Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Lewis Hamilton is the most successful Formula 1 driver of all time, and I know that some angry Lando Norris fans are going to try and prove me wrong, but it's literally a fact. He's currently in a fight with Max Verstappen for the chance to become an eight-time world champion, but if things had panned out slightly differently five years ago, he could already have it. Back in 2016, when Lewis was a mere three-time world champion, Mercedes were enjoying their most dominant spell ever in the sport. Out of the 22 races in the year, Mercedes won 20 of them, and the only two they lost were from DNFs, not a lack of pace. Nico Rosberg won all four of the first four races of the season, before a collision between himself and Hamilton took them both out of contention for a certain one too. Hamilton then began to claw back points on Rosberg, winning all but one of the next seven races. This spell came to an end when Rosberg won three races on the trot, but then came Malaysia. Up until this race, the two drivers were pretty much neck and neck on points, but then... Lewis's engine failed in Malaysia while he was leading the race. That one moment on lap 41 of the Malaysian Grand Prix is undoubtedly the moment that changed the championship fight. While Rosberg only managed third that day, it meant that Hamilton now had to win every single one of the remaining races to ensure he took the championship. This was something that he came agonizingly close to doing, but a third place in Suzuka while Rosberg won meant that all Nico had to do was finish second in the final four races, which he managed. Lewis did everything he could have done to give himself a shot at the title by winning every single one of those races, but sadly it wasn't enough, and Rosberg walked away with the crown. Had Hamilton's engine held up in Malaysia, he would have won the championship by eight points. The fact that something so big can hinge on something so small is something I've always loved about Formula One, and in this video I wanted to give my thoughts as to what would have happened if Hamilton had won the 2016 World Championship. Of course, this is an opinion-based video, so I'd love for you to share your opinions on this matter in the comments, but what if you had something more important to share? Well, that's where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence and run your business. I've been meaning to set up a merch store for a while now, and with 50k fast approaching, I've decided to go and do it. But I'm not being paid to sell you my merch, so let me just cut to the chase here. I'll be using Squarespace to run this store, because, to put it simply, it's the best best. But let's say you're not going to be selling t-shirts with your name on them for a living. What can Squarespace do for you? Well, if you're someone who does creative things, then having a pretty website is key to selling your stuff. After all, no one's going to want to buy something from a website that looks like it was made in ICT in 2005, are they? But if you aren't a creative person, then here's a list of other things you can do with a Squarespace site. So if you've been wanting to set up a website just as I have, then head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch the site to the great big world, then head to squarespace.com slash John Warren and use code John Warren for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get into this, shall we? So the first thing I'm assuming that would have happened would be that Nico Rosberg continued to race in Formula 1. It could of course be argued that he left because of the toll the championship fight took on him rather than the outcome, but in my opinion, he would have wanted to stay in Formula 1 for another chance of beating Lewis. However, I don't think he'd have stayed with Mercedes. You see, 2017 would have been his fifth season alongside Hamilton, and having been beaten by him four years in a row, I would would assume that Rosberg would be looking to beat Hamilton elsewhere, and I see no better place for him to have gone than Ferrari. As much as it pains me to say so, I think he would have replaced Kimi Raikkonen, which would probably have seen him enter an early retirement sad times. Sorry, Kimmy. Rather uncharacteristically for Ferrari, their 2017 car was actually quite good, with Vettel taking three wins and three second place finishes in the first six races of the season, meaning he led the championship going into Canada. But in traditional Scuderia Ferrari fashion, this lead disappeared faster than Callum Eilat's F1 hopes. And here come the dislikes. Still, Vettel finished second in the championship that year, and with an arguably stronger driver than Kimi in the other car, this could have led to some actually happy Ferrari fans for once. 2018 was largely the same story, with Vettel winning both of the first two races and holding the championship lead into Germany, which aged well, didn't it? Kimi had a much more successful season as well, with points in every race that he finished and almost a podium every round, along with a win that broke the record for the longest gap between wins. Now, of course, Nico wouldn't have been breaking that record, but he would absolutely have been able to take at least a few wins, and potentially would have been able to help Ferrari take the Constructors' Championship with Valtteri Bottas having a bad season in the Mercedes. Now, speaking of Bottas, let's talk about how he would have fared in these two years briefly. He would have been viciously beaten by Hamilton in both years. I told you it would be brief. So, 2019. This is where it gets interesting. Ferrari would obviously want to promote Charles Leclerc into the main team, but who gives way for him? We have two German drivers, both driving as well as they've ever done, and one of them surely has to give. 
or would they? Ferrari are still known to hold on to their drivers for a long time, and if both of their drivers are doing well, then why would they take a gamble on a driver in just his second year in Formula 1? We know that Leclerc did just fine for Ferrari now, but at the end of 2018, nobody could predict it, so it would have been fair enough that they allow Leclerc another year with Sauber. Oh, and I should mention that in neither of 2017 or 2018 do I think that Rosberg would have taken the title, so Hamilton would be going into 2019 as a six-time world champion. Let's also assume that Rosberg and Vettel both carry on with Ferrari in 2019. The 2019 Ferrari car was, in many ways, the start of Ferrari's fall from the top, as it had been hit quite hard by the slight change in aero regulations between years. That said, it was still able to pull its weight against the Mercedes at most tracks due to the impressive top speed, something that gave Leclerc his first pole position in the real-life Bahrain Grand Prix, and something that I reckon Nico Rosberg would have been able to do in my imagination as well. Now, I'm not by any means saying that Rosberg would have been able to do this every weekend, and neither would Vettel, but it would definitely have been interesting to see these two get absolutely thrashed by Lewis Hamilton in his prime. There's no two ways about it, Lewis is going to win this one too. 2020 would largely be the same story for Hamilton as it was in real life, but for Rosberg it would have been different because Nico Rosberg spent all of 2020 playing racing games, and in my alternate reality, he would be driving for Ferrari. Now, you know just as well as I do that the 2020 Ferrari car was as slow around a racetrack as a quadriplegic in a triathlon, so to say that Rosberg would have done any better than just an odd podium would not just be optimistic, it would be stupid. 2020 was arguably Lewis Hamilton's most dominant season in the sport as well, and for that reason I see this as being the year when he would have taken a record-breaking 8th World Championship, so nothing has really changed on his end, aside from an extra trophy in that extra large cabinet of his. I also see 2020 as being the year when Ferrari take the decision to switch up their driver lineup, doing to Rosberg just as they did to Vettel, but with a consequence being that Rosberg would take it as an opportunity to leave the sport entirely, ending a career that had lasted 15 years in the same way that Alonso had left in 2018, but without the world championship or the fairy tale return. Quite sad, really. This would have meant that 2021 would look almost exactly as it does in the real world, with Leclerc and Sainz being at Ferrari and Hamilton and Bottas at Mercedes. The only difference would be that Kimi Raikkonen would not be in F1 anymore, so the Sauber lineup would be Giovinazzi and Pascal Wehrlein, a man who needs a whole video to tell his story. Hamilton would be chasing down his ninth world championship this year, with pressure only from Max Verstappen, just as it is in real life, but with one more world championship. <laughs> We've already been through this. This is definitely one of the more interesting videos I've made, as there are just so many variables involved, and if this one does well, then I'll definitely be making more what ifs. If you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it, then be sure to show your appreciation with a like and a subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all later. You just come